Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 9L of Useful Genetics, where we're going to talk about speciation and hybridization. We'll talk about how new species form, first we'll define what a species is, and we'll talk about how hybridization can either make it easier for new species to form, or can prevent formation of new species. So we better start by defining what we mean by species. And I'm going to use what's called the biological species concept, which stated as simply as possible says that if two populations of any organism regularly interbreed in nature, then biologists will consider them to be the same species. There's a lot of fussing and details, but this is the core of the definition. And it's a definition that makes sense genetically because if populations interbreed successfully, then this means that their chromosomes are regularly recombining and that their genomes are going to become shuffled combinations of the same alleles. And of course, if that's the case, they're sharing the same alleles, then they really have to be the same kind of organism, the same species. Speciation, then, is the process, the series of events, by which a single ancestral species has become two distinct descendant species. And I phrase it that way. I say the process by which they have become distinct because we can't really recognize speciation when, it hap when it's happening. It's not an inevitable process with a beginning at an end. It's only after the fact that you can look back and say, oh, in this case, this species did give rise to two distinct descendant species. So how does speciation happen? Again, I'm going to give you the simplest view because there are whole textbooks, whole courses just on speciation. So imagine a population of some species, and although individuals are different, they're constantly exchanging alleles, and so we can think of their genomes as being shuffled versions of the same gene pool, the same set of alleles of genes. If a barrier arises, say a stream starts to flow between the two parts of the population, and that barrier disrupts genetic exchange between individuals on either side, then the two groups on either side of the barrier will gradually diverge through a combination of random mutation, um, random um, persistence of mutations in one side of the pop one population and not the other, so that some alleles become fixed, as i.e. established on one side and not the other, and also natural selection which even if the two environments are completely the same, once the alleles start to change, natural selection will cause increased change. And eventually, the two populations will become so distinct that they can no longer interbreed. And we would say these are now two distinct species. And we would look back in time and we would say that this was the ancestral species. And this then is the process of speciation. But that's what can happen sometimes. Sometimes a species will give rise to two species. But other times, speciation may not occur. So again, we've got our original population. We've got our geographic barrier. But maybe this gene barrier is not a very strong barrier to gene flow between the two populations. Maybe they're birds, and they fly across the river with no problem, or insects, or wind-pollinated plants. And in those cases, there may be substantial um, genetic exchange between the populations on either side of the barrier. And depending on how the um, how much hybridation there is and how successful it is, the um, population may not diverge. The two populations may not diverge into distinct species at all. They may become somewhat different, but 
those that are closest to each other may just subtly blend into each other so that there's nowhere where you can say this is a this is a different species than this what exactly happens here depends quite a bit on the process of hybridization so we, this is easiest to think about if we think about two populations that have actually diverged, but they're not really completely distinct species yet. They're similar enough that some interbreeding is possible, some hybridization. So we could think of these as perhaps subspecies. And maybe that river that I drew dries up, and these two populations are again able to come together. Are they going to continue to be distinct species or so, will they continue to be distinct subspecies and become even more different or will they merge together? Well, it partly depends on what happens with the hybrids. If the hybrids that form between these two groups are less fit, so the ones that I've marked with stars are sort of sickly, they don't leave many offspring, then the mixed population that occurs in here may shrink and it may be that one population dies out or it may be that both populations persist but there aren't very many individuals in this hybrid zone because the ones that hybridize are less fit. If the fit fitness reduction is small they may still eventually interbreed and blend back into a single population. But if the fitness reduction is large, alleles that prevent cross matings, you could think of them as mate recognition that can tell the difference between the blue individuals and the green individuals, these alleles would be favored because they prevent wasteful formation of hybrids, ensuring that individuals mate with other individuals who give the most offspring, the most grandchildren, and this can reinforce the species differences so that hybridization actually helps the species to become distinct. On the other hand, if the hybrids are not less fit, or only a tiny bit less fit, then the hybrids won't breed true. Of course, hybrids never breed true. And as they mate with each other and back with the blue ones and the green ones, they're going to generate offspring with all different combinations of alleles from both populations, mixing them together. And the end result will be that the two diverged populations will probably merge back into a single species. Evolutionary biologists might refer to this as an unsuccessful speciation attempt, but that has the unfortunate connotation that speciation was somehow a goal, that it was directed, that the population was trying to speciate. And of course, that's not the case. Um, evolutionary processes are largely blind to the consequences. They're not working towards a goal. So we've considered the biological species concept, and we've looked at it from the perspective of geneticists saying, what's the genetic basis? How do chromosomes and genes and recombination and genomes make sense of this idea? Then we've looked at the process of speciation, how new species sometimes form and sometimes don't form. And we talked about the role of hybridization in either reinforcing the differences between two species or in causing what might have become two species to instead blend back together into a single species. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the role of hybridization in conservation genetics. I hope to see you there.